Here's an interview I conducted with Dr. David Carbonell on September 5th, 2017. Today we talk about his work with Fear of Flying. He has a new workbook coming out, a Fear of Flying workbook. Here's our conversation. I hope you enjoy it. I'm Nina Riccardi, a therapist in Chicago, and I'm here today to interview Dr. David Carbonell. He's a Chicago psychologist. He specializes in fears and phobias. He's also the coach at anxietycoach.com, the author of several self-help books about anxiety. And his most recent book is a workbook on the fear of flying, and that's what we're going to talk about today. So Dave, what can you tell me about your work with folks with fear of flying? Well, my, my whole practice is you know, working with people that have various fears and phobias. Mm -hmm. and, uh, over the years, I saw any number of people, I'd, I'd work with them individually on fear of flying. And then at one point, I realized, gee, if I could get enough of them together at one time, mm -hmm. uh, we could actually go on a flight together, and that would really advance the work. Um, so that's principally what I do now. Uh, well, once or, or twice a year, typically, I'll have a, a weekend workshop, or mm -hmm. sometimes I'll do it spread out over four weeks. Um, but basically, we'll work together for about six or seven hours, and then we all go on a flight together the wow. next day. Wow. So is this a common fear for people? I mean, what, what are they actually scared of? Uh, well, it's surprisingly common. Uh, studies suggest might be as much as 15% of the population wow. is uh, really, really afraid of flying. Um, and I, I think if, if you're not afraid of flying, you might suppose, mm -hmm. uh, well, they're afraid of crashing. Uh, mm -hmm. that, that must be it. Um, but the truth is that that's just a relatively small uh, minority of fear of flying, uh, maybe about a third of uh, research in my own experience suggests about a, about a third of fearful flyers are hmm. principally afraid of crashing and dying. Hmm. Uh, the other two thirds are much more like uh, instances of someone having claustrophobia or, or panic disorder, uh, where, where their fear is, is not a safety issue at all with the airplane. Wow. Uh, they're afraid that they're going to get so afraid on the airplane mm -hmm. uh, that when they hear the door clang and they, they think to themselves, oh my God, I'm trapped, I can't get off. What if I get really nervous? What if I start sweating? What if I can't breathe? Hmm. Uh, what if I become so afraid, say, that I have a heart attack or a mm -hmm. stroke? Mm -hmm. uh, what if uh, I, I just go crazy? Uh, I, I become so afraid. Uh, um, what if uh, out of my fear... Uh, I, I demand to be let off and they won't let me off and, and what if I start kicking at a window or trying to open the door? Mm -hmm. uh, what if I charge the cockpit and all the, the passengers come together and, and uh, uh, crazy glue me to the chair or wow. duct tape me to a seat somehow? Uh, so they're really afraid of uh, the fear. It, mm -hmm. It's not the flying, it's the fear for a majority of these people. And what's going to take them over or something? That's right. right. Yeah. Yeah, what will happen to them or what they themselves will do out of fear. Right. So is this something that exists in folks from day one? Does it develop over time and their development? How does this come about in people? You know, it, it almost always develops over time. It, right. it's, it's relatively unusual, uh, certainly in, in my experience, to mm -hmm. work with anyone uh, who's literally been afraid of flying their entire life. Wow. Uh, uh, almost all the folks that I've worked with have, are people who flew and, and flew without particular difficulty maybe mm -hmm. for years. Mm -hmm. uh, and then either all at once or, or gradually uh, they became afraid of, of flying. Mm -hmm. um, and as they noticed that they were afraid and they, they tried uh, hard not to become afraid, uh, it, it seems to grow then. And, and for wow. many people, uh, um, they'll reach a point where they simply can't board an airplane at all, but it's, it's frustrating and aggravating to them. It gets them mad mm -hmm. uh, with themselves right? because they, they keep having the idea, well, I used to be able to do this. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I used to be able to do this with no trouble, and why can't I just get back to doing what I used to do? Right. So, that's so they layer it and it feels even worse. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they're unhappy with themselves, they're confused and, and angry, and of course all that uh, getting angry at oneself, well, it tends to make the problem harder to solve. Right, right. So can you talk a little bit about what it's like to leave on the first flight versus the return flight on those weekends for people? I mean, there's clearly a mood shift, I can imagine, but what's it like to participate in, in that with people? Yeah, well, f first let me mention what we're doing on the airplane. Yeah. Um, because, you know, we, I call this a practice flight. When, right. when people come into the group initially, they, they tend to think, 
that this is going to be some kind of a final exam. Hmm. Um, that uh, we'll have the workshop together and I'll teach them these cognitive behavioral skills and uh, initially they're thinking then uh, it, it's time to put up or shut up. I have to demonstrate that I can fly and not right. be afraid. Uh, and that's actually the opposite of what we're going to mm -hmm. do. Um, mm -hmm. Because hmm. uh, what, what prevents them from being able to fly is the idea uh, that they have that, well, first I need to lose my fear right. while I'm on the ground, mm -hmm. and then I can fly. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's actually what makes them unable to fly, because mm -hmm. the, the harder you try to not be afraid, I'm not going to be afraid, uh oh, my palms are sweaty. I'm not going to be afraid, oh, I'm having that thought again. Why mm -hmm. can't I stop being afraid? Wow. Uh, the more they struggle against being afraid, the less likely they are to uh, find the ability to get on the plane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so. Uh, this practice flight, uh, it's, it's not practice with flying. We know flying works. The mm -hmm. pilots get plenty of practice <laughs> under other circumstances. Right. Uh, what, what this is, is practice being a passenger uh, and showing up and being afraid uh, and allowing myself, as, as a group member, allowing myself to feel afraid and working with all the signs and symptoms of mm -hmm. being afraid rather than struggling against them, trying to suppress them. Mm -hmm. uh, so the outbound flight, uh, generally, uh, people get that experience. They right. become real afraid, and we do the journaling, and we do the breathing, and they, they do a number of responses, accepting, allowing myself mm -hmm. to feel afraid responses, such that by the time we get to our destination, turn around and board the return flight, uh, that return mm -hmm. flight is generally a lot easier for people, mm -hmm. uh, because they've had one good experience of seeing, wow, I can let myself be afraid, and life and the flight goes on all mm -hmm. the same. I don't have to stop it. Right. Do some people regret that they didn't do this sooner, or they didn't realize how treatable it was? What, what sort of feedback do you um, get? Yes, I, yeah. I think what, once people have gotten through, right. um, and of course, you know, this is common in all kinds of walks of life. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I think when people are done with this, they, they wish they had done it sooner. Wow, uh, right. uh, I had a knee surgery I postponed for years, mm -hmm. um, thinking somehow, oh, this is too risky, they're going to cripple me, I'm afraid to do that. And when I finally got the new knee, yeah. uh, I wished I'd had it for a while. Right, you were a new yeah, man. Right. Yeah. So I, I think that's a very common uh, reaction to some kind of healing process. But yeah, people are generally... Uh, quite excited and, and happy mm. with themselves to regain this ability that they used to have. Mm -hmm. um, because it's it's a real hardship, a, a limitation to not be able to fly. Right, there's a lot of other logistics people have tried to work out. I could imagine taking trains or avoiding things or... Limiting uh, the yes. family vacations and you know, living in dread of when the young children find out about Disney World and how we're... Right. Uh, you know, right. That sort of thing that they know demands are coming, if not from the family, from right. work. Um, you know, the opportunity for promotions that come with the need to, to travel. Oh, right. Uh, so, hard as they try, I, I think people who are afraid of flying uh, find it very hard to get to a point where they can mm. go long term and just say, well, I can't fly and I'm good with that. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it still uh, rubs them the wrong way, it still brings up a lot of limitations in their life and mm -hmm. uh, try as they will, it's difficult to reconcile yourself to never being able to fly again. Wow. And would you say there's some power in the group process? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I, I think uh, for a lot of these people it's, it's the first time ever that they've had the chance to mm -hmm. sit and talk with someone else who mm -hmm. uh, can relate to their fears, you know, well, they'll have the experience if I was just going to say that, uh, wow. you know, you're describing exactly, yeah. uh, whereas uh, other times they've talked to their family uh, or other people who aren't afraid of flying and have trouble relating to that. and. You'll get responses like, well, why don't you just forget about it? Or, or <laughs> right. uh, uh, tell yourself it's okay. okay. Or put right. on a happy face. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, stuff that doesn't work at all. Right. And that, that's kind of a lonely, frustrating experience for them as well. Yeah, I can uh, so to have the chance to meet some other people that are right there with them and, and understand it, uh, that, that, that is a big advantage. Mm -hmm. So what was it like to translate some of these sort of in vivo experiences to your new workbook? Oh, well, uh, writing is a uh, solitary, laborious exercise. Uh -huh. right. um, I, I think I've uh, managed to put in all the, the, the various steps and techniques and understandings that we 
mm -hmm. using the group. That was my intention with the book, uh, the, to write a standalone self-help book for people mm -hmm. who, um, by reason of geography or whatever, uh, aren't able, you know, to uh, take advantage of a group like this. And, and so this is the next best thing. Mm -hmm. You can do it at home. Um, and uh, you know what I suggest in the book is well here's here's exactly the process that we go through in the group and and if you like uh, you you could plan on doing this in 30 days it's not a long a long term process right uh, at least you know it's very reasonable to think about doing this uh, in 30 days with an eye towards well I'm going to get my first practice flight in in a right. month from now uh, or you can do it more slowly. Um, but I, I think that's a very reasonable period of time that most people yeah. can do it that way. Right, and you said to me once that it's important that it be a practice flight, not necessarily a flight that's bringing you to your cousin's birthday or yes. a conference. Have it be expressly for your yes, own Yes, yeah, this, treatment. this should be right. uh, that, that first practice flight. You shouldn't double up on, well, right. I have to go to this wedding or, or this conference. Um, make it a flight that's purely for the purpose of, I'm going to go and practice being Wonderful. afraid. Because if you double up with some other purpose, uh, well, you, you can't help but feel like, gee, I want to put limits on how afraid I get. Uh, oh, that, yeah. That's going to interfere with the, with the practice. Right. So just somebody today, in fact, called our agency wanting some help around fear of flying. So if I wanted to send this individual to get this book, how do we get your workbook, Dave? Uh, well, the, the book is uh, being printed as we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not actually going to be available as a, a paperback until approximately November 15. Okay. Um, uh, in the interest of, of getting the, the book out there as widely distributed as possible, we're uh, offering it as a pre-order on my website ah, uh -huh. uh, at anxietycoach.com. Um, uh, when the book actually comes out, it's going to list for $15.95. Mm -hmm. uh, People who want to go to the website now and, and pre-order it can get it for the low, low price of eight dollars and ninety-five cents. Lowest price you ever going to see. Wow, uh, that sounds book. great. Uh, and that, that's that's available at anxietycoach.com. That's really cool. So you've had success with this with patients. They've stayed in touch with you. What sort of feedback do you get? I get postcards. You do? Yeah, I get yeah. postcards from all over the world, from uh, uh, Paris and Moscow wow. and Beijing and London and. Boise and San Francisco, and mm -hmm. they all pretty much say the same thing. Uh, they have a little <laughs> picture of, uh, you know, the lobsters if it's New Orleans, or the the bread if it's uh, Seattle, uh, <laughs> and then on the other side they write, "I flew here all by myself." That's beautiful. And they were just so excited That's because great. The, the world has literally opened up yeah. for them again. Yeah, yeah they've great. regained their territory. It's lovely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time. This sounds uh, wonderful and really applicable for so many folks. Oh, good, good. Thanks for having me. Thanks, Dave.